Welcome to the Pharma Podcast, conversations with industry experts and business leaders about important and current topics in Canadian pharma, biotech, and medtech. I'm your host, Sam Tarantino. On this episode of the Pharma Podcast, my special guest is Lois Brown, President of Health Partners International Canada. Lois and I will discuss Health Partners and its response to the emergency in Ukraine. Welcome to the Pharma Podcast, Lois. Well, thank you, Sam. I'm delighted to be here today. Before we discuss the uh, the emergency in Ukraine and, and Health Partners' uh, yeah, response to the emergency, why don't we start by uh, maybe telling the audience about uh, a little bit about yourself and, and Health Partners. Well, thank you for that opportunity. And Sam, I'm newly in this position as of Tuesday morning of this week. So to have so much responsibility so quickly is uh, a little bit overwhelming, but I have such a wonderful staff. I am delighted. I am delighted to be working with them. Sam, I was formerly the Member of Parliament for New Market Aurora, elected in 2008 and served in Mr. Harper's administration until 2015. Met many of the people in the pharma industry as different pieces of legislation were coming up for renewal. And so met many people and have great admiration for the work that they do in our economy and for our country. I. I uh, was made aware of health partners because I was appointed parliamentary secretary for international development and served in that capacity for six years. Met with many of the smaller NGOs. The minister and I had a division of responsibilities. Uh, he met with you know, some of the larger partners, but I met with the stakeholders on a regular basis. And Health Partners was one of those organizations that came to visit with me. What I liked about their model was that they have partnered with industry already to do development work in developing countries. Now, Health Partners also responds very quickly to emergency and crisis situations as we are with Ukraine, as we did with Lebanon a year and a half ago. But fundamentally, we were working with the pharma industry uh, for the last 30 years to get quality essential medications into developing countries. In 31 years of existence, Health Partners has managed to see about $625 million worth of pharma products from Canada go into developing countries. When I was defeated in 2015, I was called by the Board of Health Partners and asked if I would consider sitting on the board. Um, I guess it was 2018 when I started. And I was, I was honored to be asked because I have admired the model. I believed I brought to the board some skills and some some networking that they didn't have before, and it was a it was a tremendous opportunity to interact with this organization. Our president left last uh, September for a new opportunity, and uh, uh, we were in a little bit of a. a we were a little flux at the time, so I offered to step in and just volunteer as a board member to hold the reins until Christmas time and let the board make its decision on, you know, the next leadership process. I actually was part of the search team to interview prospective candidates, but just didn't work. And now here I am, president of Health Partners. So... <laughs> A real honor to be here with this organization. I, I wasn't looking for a job. I, my husband and I own our own business, and it has been a tremendous opportunity for us to grow. But uh, Health Partners is its a new challenge, and uh, I am truly honored to be here in this position today. Well, thank you for that introduction. The uh, the news coming out of Ukraine is, is, is devastating. Um, I mean, since uh, Russia invaded Ukraine on February the 24th, there have been thousands of deaths um, reported and, I don't know, million, 1.5 million refugees, people displaced. Um, it's it's devastating to, to the news coming out of, out of Ukraine. Can you um, outline for our audience how Health Partners is responding to this crisis? 
Well, and, and you're absolutely right. The devastation in Ukraine is heartbreaking. The, the loss of life is overwhelming. And yesterday's news about the, the bomb that hit that maternity hospital, I think it just breaks every Canadian's heart to hear those stories and see on the news what's going on. I think as of today, the UN is saying that there are over 2 million refugees who have moved across the border into Poland and, and of course Moldova and Romania, all of these countries that are being impacted. And the resources are, are few, but the demand is great. And the health systems of some of these countries is just overwhelmed. So the opportunity for an organization like Health Partners to step up and to, to manage to get uh, medications into these crisis places is absolutely imperative. We're working with a number of, of avenues, multiple partners actually, to provide relief to Ukrainians in country and to refugees who are in the neighboring, uh, the neighboring countries. We've already sent uh, six humanitarian medical kits into Poland and Ukraine, and we actually have a team of volunteers here in our, in our distribution center in Oakville today who have come to help pack more of these kits. We have kits that are leaving with a group of physicians from Sick Kids, uh, Sunnybrook and St. Michael's Hospitals in Toronto. And those, those physicians are going into Ukraine to evacuate children who are suffering from cancer and are in treatment. They are going to evacuate those kids into neighboring countries so that they can ensure that they are able to pursue the medications that they need. We've already sent uh, one set of humanitarian medical kits to Ukraine. It's gone with a group of physicians called uh, Canadian Medical Assistance Team. And we are, we are thrilled that they will, those are going to be sending doctors on a two week rotation. And we want to ensure that there are kits available for them. Thank you. Can you describe for our audience the humanitarian medical kits? Absolutely. The medical kits are designed that they can go as carry-on luggage with an individual who is taking a kit. Oftentimes, when medical missions are going into remote communities in, in developing countries, those kits contain all of the pharmaceutical products that a physician would need to establish a small pharmaceutical in that remote clinic. We have slightly different medications that are going into these ones that are going to Ukraine because they certainly don't need the anti-malarials that we would normally put in, but they contain treatments, antibiotics, hypertensives, analgesics, and of course, most first aid products. Okay, now I believe you've set a goal to mobilize some 400 humanitarian kits to, to the Ukraine and various refugee camps in surrounding. Can you explain, yes? Yeah, that is an internal goal for us. We have decided that we would like to see 400 kits mobilized to Ukraine. We certainly have the avenues to get them there. What we need are for people to sponsor those kits. We have very generous partners in, our, in the pharmaceutical industry, and we are exceedingly grateful that the products come to us as gift in kind. We have a responsibility to keep the lights on in our own facility and so and to pack the kits and to ensure that all of the customs documents are available for a person who's carrying one of those medical kits. So we have work to do on our side and we are simply asking for a contribution of $600 per kit. For that $600, an individual is actually taking approximately $6,000 worth of pharma products. So it's one of these magic things that happens when $1 turns into 10, but it is, it is, it is just, 
because we've got such wonderful partners in the pharma industry that we are able to do this. And may I just take a moment to say an enormous thank you to the generosity of the pharma companies in Canada who have supported health partners over the years. They have been generous for 31 years. But right now in this crisis in Ukraine with so much demand and such a short time period, they have all been exceedingly generous to us and we are very, very grateful. We know that that you, through us, are touching thousands and thousands of lives. And we thank you for the opportunity to be your hands and feet, as it were, to get these medications to the people who need them. Do you receive any government support? We don't. Uh, there's only one time that Health Partners has ever done a project in cooperation with the Government of Canada, long before my time on Parliament Hill, but they did a small project in Afghanistan. It was very successful, and again, thanks to the Canadian Pharma Industries. But we have not had any money from the government since that project, and by and large, due to the generosity of Canadians, who have supported health partners over the years, and again, to the pharma companies who have been generous in providing assistance to health partners to keep the lights on. Sure. Can you speak a little bit more about the assistance you're receiving from industry? Is it, you said, uh, the, the product in kind? I imagine there's financial donations as well. Uh, do they provide any other assistance? Well, uh, we do have pharma companies who like to send teams of their staff to come and help pack the humanitarian medical kits. They, the pharma companies are amazing, Sam. They, I mean, we do a lot of bulk shipping as well. We had a shipment that went to Burkina Faso in December. It was $860,000 worth of penicillins and amoxicillin that went there. Uh, generosity beyond belief. And we are shipping to Haiti, Ethiopia, Malawi, Cameroon, Somalia, Iraq, Gaza, uh, West Bank, Jordan, and Syria. Like All of these are ongoing projects at the same time that we are dealing with the situation in Ukraine. So it is, it is generous pharma who are helping to have these things happen. And again, I say we're just the hands and feet to get it there. But it really is due to the pharmaceutical companies who support organizations. Well, when I say organizations like Health Partners, we are the only organization licensed by Health Canada to procure, to store, to ship, and to mobilize these pharma products. Sam, we have to work with trusted partners on the ground. We have a responsibility both to Health Canada and to our pharma partners to ensure that all of these products get to their designated destination. And so it is very important that we have trusted partners who are receiving bulk shipments in particular to make sure that they get to the clinics or hospitals where they are destined to go. We need medical people who are involved to sign off on these things when they are received in country. But we do work with Canadian trusted NGOs, Children Believe, we've worked with uh, Hope and Healing, we've worked with Samaritan's Purse, we've worked with uh, oh, ADRO, there's a Anglican diocese in Northeast Ghana that we've worked with. We had a partnership with Asenko Gold that we just finished in Ghana just last at the end of last year to get, again, quality medications to a community to ensure that those individuals who were engaged with Asenko Gold were able to have the good help that they needed to be able to go to work. And we will likely renew that project in the future. Asenko Gold is going through some of its own reorganization, so we're not with them at the moment. But we have done some tremendous projects overseas, and we are just we are just in, incredibly thankful for what pharma has been able to provide. Can you speak to the logistics? I imagine it's quite complex getting a drug across, especially temperature controlled product and some 
cold chain. Can you speak to the logistics and the carriers? Well, we have some wonderful partnerships with carriers who are willing to transport the, the pharmaceutical uh, products. We have a fellow on our staff who is really quite expert at the, at the uh, shipping portion of all of this. I do have to state that we are not licensed for cold chain uh, drugs, so we have to leave that to other people. But we have made arrangements uh, at times for those to be to be carried, and uh, it's not it's not under our license. Though so we have to be very careful that we stay within the parameters. But the shipping is a real challenge at times, and particularly right now when we have a shortage of containers. That is a worldwide problem. It's not just a health partners problem. We are awaiting a container that we were supposed to have several weeks ago for a shipment to Lebanon. Since the explosion in the harbor in Beirut, Canadian pharmaceutical companies have contributed almost $3 million worth of products that have restocked much of the General Hospital in Beirut and the Children's Hospital. Both of those hospitals were severely damaged in that explosion and it has been very difficult for them to regroup. But again, generosity from Canadian pharma industry. The third container is the one that we're waiting for to get this container on the ship to get to Lebanon. But uh, we're stymied at the moment just because of the lack of lack of containers so there are times that we do airdrop it's more expensive obviously to do that and we depend on our on our ngo partners to help with those costs but we we have had we have had many offers at this time for ukraine to get materials over there and so we are exploring all of those opportunities can you explain how our listeners, and frankly, all Canadians, um, how they can help? So with our humanitarian medical kits, those, as I said, are two boxes that are prepared for an individual to take as carry-on luggage. And those are carried by healthcare volunteers, medical missions, our NGOs, uh, of the 27 kits that we've already deployed to Ukraine, six have gone with NGO partners, 21 are being carried, as I said, next week by doctors from Toronto Sick Kids. And we know that the CMAT teams are doing uh, deployments of, of physicians on a two week rotation basis. So we want to ensure that kits can go with them every time they go. It is an opportunity for Canadians to become engaged in this process for a $600 donation. They can sponsor a medical kit that is going to go over to Ukraine. And as I said before, that kit contains about $6,000 worth of pharma products. A donation can be made on our website. It's hpicanada.ca and there is a donation place specifically for Ukraine. We are hoping that we will see 400 kits sponsored. That will be tens and tens of thousands of people who will be assisted through your generosity. Lois, thank you for uh, being a guest on the Pharma Podcast, and, and thank you to Health Partners uh, and its staff for, uh, for their commitment um, and uh, their response to this emergency. Um, contact details for Health Partners will also be available on our website, along with instructions on how you can help and make a donation. The Pharma Podcast can be found on our website at thepharmapodcast.ca. The Pharma Podcast is also available to listen to for free on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and YouTube.